Let's get to the top picks. Uh, we're going to kick off with Amazon.com. David. We touched on Amazon, I think, earlier in the show, Andy, when we were talking about Canadian Tire. Um, I think there's a couple catalysts uh, that we think will uh, take Amazon back to its high price. It's down about 25% from where it was uh, prior to the market having its recent uh, woes. And we think it can certainly go back up towards $200. Uh, first of all, they're going to be spending less money on uh, capital expenditures. They uh, basically doubled their fulfillment capacity. They built a lot of uh, package handling centers, and uh, that was a drain on cash flow. We think that's pretty much over. Number two, their web-based uh, cloud computing services continue to grow, and that's a very high margin uh, business. Uh, Amazon has um, proven that it can sell almost anything, uh, almost anywhere in the world. It's a wonderful business, and um, I think it got unfairly punished during the recent market sell-off. So it's a core holding for us. Um, I think uh, I think we should see that stock go up steadily from here. And as I say, no reason it can't get up to $200. It's hard to see anyone knocking Amazon.com off its pedestal. But of course, uh, there's always the unexpected. Well, one never knows. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, 10 years from now, who knows? But this is a company that's managed to reinvent itself a number of times. Uh, who five years ago would have thought that their cloud uh, their cloud computing would be such a big business? That uh, that really uh, uh, was unexpected. So um, they've shown the versatility and the ability to uh, to have new ideas. Uh, what they've done in the food business uh, obviously important. They they've just bought a uh, robotic cleaning company. So they're um, they have a mountain of cash and they're using it. Costco, another legendary retailer. I guess you're hedging your bets. You've got an online giant, you've got a brick and mortar giant. So I think if you own Costco and Amazon, as you say, you're covered both directions. Um, I think Costco and, and Amazon fill two kind of different needs. You know, if you want to fill the car with, uh, with dog food and paper towels and uh, uh, whatever is on sale, you're going to head to Costco uh, and buy that kind of stuff. If you happen to need something tomorrow or you want a book to read, maybe Amazon is easier. Uh, Costco's membership-driven uh, model has proven to be, I think, an absolute stroke of genius. They get tremendous, tremendous uh, customer durability. They don't have very high erosion of their customer base. Their attrition is very low. And uh, that's very important. People just keep coming back and coming back because they know the prices are good. As Costco gets bigger, its pricing power gets larger, its international footprint gets larger. Uh, and I think it's uh, uh, just a wonderful company to own. Again, with Amazon, you've got both bases covered. And finally, drum roll, your, t your banking pick uh -huh. is TD. So we talked about banks, and I said that we had a bank in our top picks. TD uh, is a Canadian bank, but you could almost view it as an American bank now. More than half of its assets are now in the United States. And if you go to New York City, you'll see a TD bank branch. Seems like they're on every corner. Uh, there's certainly a lot of them. And um, they have a very big footprint in the U.S. One of the things that, that I would say about the banking industry is, as always, they raise their lending rates much faster than they raise the deposit rates when interest rates go up. And that means that their interest rate spreads improve. During the very low interest rate times, the banks had to find other ways to make money uh, through fees and trading and wealth management. But now, once again, for the first time in a few years, they can make reasonable spreads on their loans against their deposits because the, uh, the loan rates went up so much faster than what they're paying depositors. So we're looking for a big increase on net interest margins, which we think will drive the profits for the banks. Some people remain concerned about the bank's exposure to real estate. Our reading indicates to us that the Canadian banks have been very conservative 
in their loan to value uh, ratios. In other words, the amount that they'll lend on a mortgage against the value of the house, rarely going above 55 or 60 percent. Much of their portfolios are insured by the Canadian Mortgage and Housing Corporation. We don't think there's a lot of exposure to bad real estate in the Canadian bank portfolios. So um, TD is our top pick. They are planning this acquisition of a U.S. company called First Horizon, as you know, for more than $13 billion U.S. I, I, sorry, we're very tight for time. Apparently not popular with all shareholders. Is that going to be an overhang with uh, for TD? What can I tell you? It's going to depend how it turns out, Andy. Yeah. But it's a lot of money. It, they're basically doubling down on their U.S. exposure, which is why I say you could almost view it as a U.S. bank now. 